Analyzing wood ash determination of the cations. Attention, in these experiments irritating, toxic and caustic compounds are handled. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the replication of these experiments. When organic material is burned, usually a part of it is left behind as ash. It consists of a variety of salts and inorganic compounds. After putting it through a sieve, it can be used very well for experimenting. At first, some ash was mixed with water and stirred. This causes some of the components to dissolve. Then it was left to sit until the insoluble parts sank to the bottom. The solution is alkaline and has a pH of 10 or 11. Out of curiosity, the exact value was measured with a pH meter. It was taken care that the glass electrode does not sit in the insoluble part. The pH value at the end was a 10.82. After letting the mixture sit overnight, the solution was filtered off and the pH was measured again. This caused it to rise to 12.35. The ash of plants consists mainly of the carbonates and oxides of calcium, sodium and potassium. Except of the calcium carbonate, all of these cause the solution to become alkaline. The calcium oxide reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide at first. The ratio between the metal ions depends on the composition of the soil. This causes the ash of plants growing close or even in the sea to have a high amount of sodium ions. To find out whether sodium and potassium are present, the flame test can be done. For this, a platinum wire or a magnesia stick is used. This is heated for a short while to lower the usual contamination with sodium salts. Next, the stick is dipped into 10% hydrochloric acid and then into the sample. It is then held into the flame of the Bunsen burner. The yellow flame indicates that sodium is present which dominates the colors of other ions. To find out if other metal ions are present, the flame is watched through a cobalt blue glass. As expected, the flame color of potassium becomes visible, but also the color of calcium where the latter is less obvious. With a spectroscope, these could be differentiated easily. In comparison to the alkali metals, calcium can be easily determined from a solution. For this, some ash was dissolved in an excess of hydrochloric acid, which is the case when no more gas is evolved on further addition of the acid. To dilute the acid and increase the volume of the solution, some distilled water was added. Then the solution was filtered. Next the solution was neutralized with 5% ammonia and 10% hydrochloric acid. After every addition the test tube was shaken and the pH was tested. The precipitate which forms on the addition of the ammonia could possibly be calcium hydroxide but it's also possible for the hydroxides of many other metals like zinc or aluminium to precipitate out when these might be present. At the end, the solution was not completely neutral, but it was close enough for the test. Next, a few drops of a saturated aqueous solution of potassium oxalate were added. Usually ammonium oxalate is used in this case, but it's not necessary. A white precipitate of insoluble calcium oxalate was formed, which is an indicator for the presence of calcium ions. Next, the ash was tested for the presence of iron. For this, another sample was dissolved in an excess of hydrochloric acid diluted with distilled water and the resulting solution filtered off. Then a 0.5% aqueous solution of potassium ferrocyanide was added to the filtrate. This reacts with iron-3 ions to form a blue compound that is known as Berlin blue, Prussian blue or Turnbull's blue, which is a proof of the presence of iron.
Next, 1.5 grams of a mixture were already prepared in a mortar, which consists of same amounts of sodium nitrate and sodium carbonate. To this, 0.5 grams of the sample were added, the mixture crushed again and transferred to a porcelain crucible. Then the mixture was heated to a glow with a Bunsen burner. The first burner was too weak, so it was replaced by a stronger one. This test can be translated as oxidizing melt, which is used to test for chromium and manganese ions. In this case, the manganese, which is mainly present in the form of manganese dioxide, is oxidized to the green manganate 6, while CO2 is released and the nitrate is reduced to the nitrite. Due to the low concentration of manganese, the color is only visible at some spots. Then it was left to sit until it had cooled down. This often causes the color to turn blue-green. Next, the proof can be made more specific by adding distilled water to the solidified mass. After a while, a small part goes into solution and the color of the manganate becomes visible. The solution was added to a test tube, which led to the color being more obvious. To test if this is indeed manganate 6, a saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate was added. Interestingly, the bicarbonate acts as an acid. The acidification of the solution causes the manganate 6 to disproportionate into the permanganate and manganese dioxide. The brown manganese dioxide is practically invisible at these low concentrations. Very dilute sulfuric acid could also be used here, but when too much acid is added, the permanganate is destroyed. This can't happen when using the bicarbonate. A simplified version of this test can be done like this. Some potassium hydroxide was added on a piece of magnesia and some ash on top. Then it was heated on the Bunsen burner. Here the manganese dioxide is oxidized by the oxygen from the air, which leads to the formation of the green potassium manganate. The change of the color to blue is due to the formation of potassium hypomanganate 5. In the ash the ions of sodium, potassium, calcium, iron and manganese were determined. These are not all cations, but for further tests the ions would have had to be concentrated and separated. This was determining the cations in wood ash. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see the determination of the anions in wood ash, you can watch my video here, or you can watch my latest video here. A big thanks to my supporters on Patreon.